All right, so my journey for the last two, nearly two and a half years, three years, I've had a big personal maturation, big change in my life. You know, from the age of eight, 21, the only thing I knew was basketball. That was it. You know, I committed pretty much to basketball after I stopped bike racing. When I was about second, second third grade, I said, basketball is going to be my life here. I am going to play in college. You know, I have aspirations to play pro ball. But I remember distinctly making that goal in sixth grade that I'm going to be a basketball player. And I came through on every goal that I wanted in that sport. It filled such a big, just, it was me, like, was me. And it's something today that it doesn't fill that same role to me. It used to be something that I would think of the day when I wouldn't have to play, when I wouldn't play again. And that day always gave me a tremendous anxiety. Because I thought basketball was life and life was basketball. There was nothing, nothing, nothing else whatsoever. And that scared me. That scared the hell out of me my entire life. And then it's my last year playing at Bellarmine. I don't know it's my last year, but things aren't going the way I want it to go. You know, I, I want to play. I came into the season, although I had a back issue that was just holding me back. I was pushing so damn hard because I wanted it so bad. You know, I had to push and claw to walk on that team. I broke a leg early going into my senior year of high school, and that really pretty much took all my recruiting interests and just, boop, none. It was done and over with. And so I had to rush back. I had to just push, 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 push. And that's carried that into college. I'm like, you know what? I want to go play at Bellarmine, so I'm going to go play there. And I did that. Granted, my career didn't go the way I wanted to. I feel like that back issue played a big role of it. And I think some things don't work out the way you envision so that you maybe get bumped over to this path that you're really supposed to be traversing, which is the path I'm traveling now, which I'm trying to kind of articulate in this my journey piece. So my last year playing ball back hurts, I'm not getting the playing time I want, the playing time I think I deserve. Basically, season's over, I'm like, I'm done. You know, I just, I'm not getting the assurances that my hard work is going to pay off, so I just knew that I couldn't go into a summer of training knowing that I wasn't going to be able to bring a spirit that I always have and always pride myself on when it comes to working towards my goals and my craft. Because my training has always been my craft at its T. And so then life opens up for me like there's no basketball and in my mind I have this idea that oh you know I'm gonna sit out the year you know graduate from Bellarmine and then go play in grad school somewhere else where I'll go play against them and you know in my head I was like I'm gonna go go put it on them you know but in that process you know I'm playing a lot of poker it was filling that competitive void for me as my body was just kind of my body hurt my body needed a break and I realized that my old training habits were just dumb for this new endeavor because it broke my body down. All the heavy weight lifting, all the explosion I gained for that training, all of it helped me so much in the sport, but I took it to another extreme because I wanted it all so damn badly, you see. I wanted it, I wanted it so bad that I ran myself into the ground and herniated those discs. Stress and accumulation in the body, you know, that just putting the pressure on myself to go train, put in the hours of work, and manifest in the body, the psyche. A closed off personality you in college you just didn't express himself he was just too bottled up and then that's that's done and so as you can tell my personality is very type a I'm a go-getter by nature and again that's fed into that part of me where I'm just I go too hard with things I try to make it all happen today you know this website that I'm basically this video is gonna like help launch to me, this should have been done and just been perfect months ago. But that's not how things work. You have to grind. You have to persevere. And I found that out along this journey these last two and a half, three years. I was bouncing around that summer playing poker at the boat. Filling my competitive void that way. I remember there was a distinct day that summer. You know, I was about to get my first full-time job at Jewish Hospital. Learn what the world's really about. That there's actually money that you have to make to provide for these things. Because I was so spoiled by my father. You know, he loves me so much, but... He, he gave me so much where I just didn't realize that a tank of gas to and from Bellarmine cost four bucks. I didn't know that. But one day I'm uh, just on my computer, I'm researching how to. I'm sorry, I just got a little choked up thing of my grandma there for a second. 
because I remember telling her this exact story before. Man. I was on the computer one morning, just not getting with it, you know, because I don't have anywhere to be, I don't have a job. I just really got this guy to go play poker at some point. That's where my head is. And I'm uh, just looking around on YouTube, because my last time playing pickup at Bellarmine and I got a turf toe injury. And my toe was just bothering me really bad, and so I was looking up stuff on YouTube, how to fix that, you know. Just what can I do to make this feel better, you know. And then I get off on um, a London Real video with Kelly Starrett. Sub Leopard guy just read his stuff on mobility work that previous spring near the end of my career at Bellarmine and it was like hitting home because my body that's what it needed was just pure mobility work to just feel better. So I listened to that interview and he name dropped some people and I'm like I value this guy. I value his opinion. He name dropped who he was reading. He mentioned a guy named Tim Ferriss. So my next day at work, you know, at a job, I'm like, well, what's a job? I'm researching this guy. I'm like, man, this guy's deep. He's got a lot of cool information. And I was just learning and I was invigorated and passionate about it. So on a whim, on my way home, I decided to go by the library. I'm like, no, oh, maybe they'll have his book. You know? Maybe they'll have his book. Or book, one of his books, I'm sure. Well, they had all of them. And I was pulling the last one off the shelf. I found Kelly Sterrick. His newest book, which I didn't know he had released. The same guy who got me on this tangent for Tim Ferriss when I was looking for this... Turf toe stuff, Kelly Stair just popped up. That book was ready to run. Dealing with foot and ankle and a lot of lower, lower downstream things with the body that would play right into my ability to heal my toe. And to me, that was like a sign from the universe, sign from God, spirit, however you want to define it. Like, okay, follow on this path, Billy. And since then, I've you know gotten into jiu-jitsu, just learning, opening myself up to the world. You know, um, just... Life has changed, and I'm referring back to some notes because there's so much I want to cover and get to, and I know I tend to go off on tangents, but that was just a crazy experience. You know, senior year of college, man, it was just invigorating. I was reading books, 30 plus books I think I read my entire last year of college outside of class. At school down to a T, it was me just discovering myself, finding out what else I was interested in other than basketball, the ability to drive down the road and be like, wow. It's beautiful out here. I'm not rushing to practice. I don't have to get to practice. I can like look at the sky and be like, oh my gosh. Because before I'd be so caught up in like, well, i got to get to practice. got to get to practice on time. got to get this back loosened up because it hurts so damn much. Stressing the mind, stressing the body. And that had been released, at least partially. My body wasn't healthy yet. I'm training. I'm invigorated. I'm passionate. And then I graduate. And during that time, you know, the parents were like, want me to go to PT school and all that. And I found out a couple summers before that, when I was doing my observation hours, I was like, no, like, I don't get to work hands-on with people as much as I'd like. I do a lot of paperwork. And then seeing it in the hospital, too, I'm working, like, I just see the healthcare profession. I don't like the paradigm. The paradigm is like, let's get you to this midline. Let's get you to this baseline, okay? Let's get you to this point. Let's get you to this midline. Let's get you to this baseline, this point to where you're, just, you're average, your status quo again. And I feel like I'm in the optimization industry. That's what mobility is about, is optimization. I want you to feel your best balanced health, mind, body, spirit, because that's the kind I'm drawn towards and attracted to. And I subconsciously, I think, bombed my PT school interview. I remember that, like going in there, I just dressed like I was gonna play golf. It looked nice, but I wasn't gonna wear the suck it up and wear the shirt and tie thing. No way, it was not happening. I got waitlisted. I think they saw that, oh, he has a little bit of an attitude. He didn't want to be here. Yeah, I don't want to be here. My parents want me to be here. And then, week of graduation, I found out you got accepted. And I'm like, I'm starting two weeks. I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. Do I trust the gut? And I was telling me, like, no, you're going to go to UofL for grad school next year because you're going to get this grad assistant spot. You know, you can kind of then start working on what you want to build there my unique vision that's here, that is mobility. I'm like, no, I can't do that. I, mean, I remember turning down that, that spot. I'm like, okay. And that summer, I enjoyed the hell out of myself. I put no pressure on myself. I learned, I trained jiu-jitsu, read books again some more. Freedom, only work three days a week. 
explored my consciousness, you know, just got in nature, just engrossing myself and just feeling the world and what it has to offer. I'm the most calm and content I've ever been in my life. And then, you know, the end of the summer, it's time, like, okay, parents, like, I thought I was going to get this grad school spot. I filled out all the paperwork. I knew with my intangibles, you know, impeccable grades, you know, everything. I knew I would get the grad assistantship. I hadn't heard back from L. Well, I finally get in touch with them and then find out that somewhere along the way a piece of paperwork didn't get to them or whatnot. And my nature, I had that stuff within a week of it being released for us to even start turning it in. I had it, what was expected of me. And somewhere along the way, one like declaration of my intent for a graduate assistantship did not get sent to them, although I fill out all the like essays and whatnot. Someone dropped the ball, and so I didn't get considered for the spot. And in my head, I'm like, I'm not going to pay for school, because I just don't see the point. I just know where that leads to. I see what all these other kids are having to deal with. I'm not in that position. I'm lucky. I'm blessed. My father paid for my schooling. And I've saved and been a very penny pincher since I was young. Just give me this freedom. And I'm like, I'm just not going to go. It's a sign from the universe. So, a piece of parents, I do apply around for jobs. And I was looking for just a part-time job in my field to start building off of. But then I got a 40-hour position at Humana. I'm like, okay, let's go do this. And I made the most of it for a long time. I sent videos out to people and helped them with their low back pain and their hips at the desk. You know, I did a lot of agendas, you know, stretch breaks, trying to get people to move better and feel better. And management, for the most part, an ambitious young man like me, you know, I was trying to do what I saw a like vision of helping people, and it didn't fit their vision. And so pretty much, like, cross paths eventually. You know, it may not have been the cleanest break, but I got away. But the entire time I was there was when mobility was being created up here. Just the inspiration. I could see it, feel it, and now I'm finally getting it out. And so then I quit, and I just started living a mobility lifestyle. Yoga, jiu-jitsu. Living it, getting in my body really pushing myself physically because my body is like finally feeling good. And mobility is that balanced state between strength and flexibility, strength of mind, that er, the type A, and that flexible looseness. Balanced health, mind, body, spirit. That is mobility. That is what I'm trying to live daily. And I'm trying to get this out, trying to get the message. Because I feel like I'm a man on a mission. My mobility mission is what I call it. I don't feel like it's just something I just came up with. I think it's something greater than me. What I'm trying, what I'm tapping into is something I'm trying to share to other people. You know how certain health practices, we can just make ourselves feel better and enjoy this life. Be peaceful, positive, passionate to enjoy the experience of it. And so, it's funny because I spoke about that last summer. So peaceful. This summer, a lot of anxiety because I know what I have to do. It's like I know my mission. I got to go do it. I'm a man with a plan. That's like it's there and I, it just has to be done. But that ambition creates anxiety and I want it now. And there's this impatient factor. You know, you have existential crisis and you're like, well, I'm going to die one day. So like I need to, I need to do this now. And you're trying so hard again like you used to. You're just trying too hard. And you start to realize you gotta back off, you gotta rest. You gotta get those eight to nine hours that you always got. You can't expect to be your best at five and a half, six hours. Even if you can hack that, you can't rely on that. You can't rely on that. And my grandma, my mom died recently, and she's near and dear to me. That entire time when I was doubting myself, or my parents were like, hey, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm almost getting choked up too now because I'm listening to this album that's kind of accompanied me these last three years. And there was a big tangent of a story on how it came into my life and just how it just kind of is like a backdrop to all this. But it's just, right now, just like spitting my journey out and hearing that song and the story I'm trying to tell, it's just it's a crazy experience right now. But she died. And she was my confidant, my confidant, the word, how you say it. My therapist, my cheerleader, you know, these last few years. Especially like when basketball wasn't going right. And then post-basketball, 
I'm like, playing poker, I don't know what's going on in my life. She was always there to just listen to me. I could talk to her about all these things. I couldn't open up with everyone. And she would just listen. And she always, like, really just trust yourself. Be yourself. Be authentic. Be you. Be you at be you. If you're a Bellarmine person reading, <laughs> listen to that, you probably laugh right now. And she always doesn't say, be you. Follow this right here. And I listened to that. Listen to that from her. And now, like, this is happening. You know, the mobility mission. I'm doing it. And I would like for you to, if you are inspired or drawn to what I'm doing, because I know this is like just talk right now. This is like, oh, I'm sharing a story. But I live what I do. I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. And through this site, hope you to get a glimpse of what my life is about, what I'm living, what I'm looking to share with the world as part of my mobility movement. I hope you can join, guys. If not, 